Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing my review for Zack Snyder's Justice League, aka the Snyder Cut. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DCEU videos later this year. Okay, so yes, I have officially watched Zack Snyder's Justice League, the new cut of Justice League, and I can tell you guys, it's really good. Now, I'm going to be breaking it down and talking about it, however, I'm not going to go into spoilers for this because none of you guys would have seen the film as of right now, because the film comes out on the 18th of March and currently right now, it's the day before the embargo lifts. So I'm not going to go into spoilers because there is a lot of spoilers when you actually watch this film, so I'm going to wait until the 18th and then we're going to do our spoiler review slash easter egg video where I'm going to break down all the easter eggs in the film, so if you guys want to see that, Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed and turn on notifications so you don't miss that out. I will be continually updating you guys. Follow me on Twitter at the DC TV Show to stay updated or follow my community page, which you can check out if you go to the channel page and you can just click the tab that says community next to playlists and videos. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead into this review. So this is all non-spoilers, so you guys are good. Just watch the video and you'll see my thoughts, okay? So if you are a DC Comics fan, you are going to love Zack Snyder's Justice League, and I'm a huge DC Comics fan, obviously you can tell by my channel, and it really lives up to the hype, and it actually exceeded my hype, because I was looking forward to it. I did like the original Justice League, although I was very aware that it was very sloppy at points, but that was because of the reshoots mainly, but now they don't have any of that footage, and it feels like a proper whole film. This is like a completely new film, and I really, really loved it. Okay, so I really do think this is Snyder's best DCEU film, and I'm going to say that and I'll stick to that because he really amps up the work that he's done in the past, times that by 10. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I wasn't the biggest Man of Steel fan, but that's just me, obviously you can have differing opinions. However, I did like Batman vs Superman, and the Snyder Cut really, really amps up what he's done in the past, I feel like this is his culmination. And he's definitely led up to it, and I think he's become a better filmmaker, and the way it's edited, I think because he's had this whole pandemic to kind of retune it and edit it together properly, it really benefits from that time that he's had, and so I think the long run time obviously scared a lot of people, however, I love it. I thought it was really good because the pacing is very smooth, yes it meanders at times, it builds this epic sense and totally builds to the conclusion that you're all hoping for whilst you're watching the film. Because the film is four hours, there is a lot to build up, and they build it up, and they take their time to introduce the characters properly. It's not like the other version of the film where literally they were cutting between, like it's just introducing the characters, blah blah blah, then you go to the fight and that's it. No, in this version, you see the extended stuff, and they add in the context, and the context is very important because having watched this version, I'm like, I really, really like some of these characters a lot more, and I'll get to that in a minute, but yeah, so you have extended versions of the big battle scene, you have an extended version of the ending, and then they add in a whole new ending as well, so there's a lot to take in, and I think they really benefited from that extra context that was able to add in, because the original version of it really lacks when you look back in retrospective, and I can't fathom how they can cut out an entire storyline like so much of the film, just in order to reach like a two hour run point, when it's clear this story was intended to be much bigger than it actually was in that original version of Justice League. And so, yeah, you build on what we knew before, and it takes the stuff that really worked in the first one, that was mainly Snyder's stuff, because, like I said, the reshoots added in a lot of stuff that really didn't make sense when you compare the two different things. Also, the cinematography really is great. It's really beautiful, gorgeous colours throughout, and the fact that they've gone for the 4x3 aspect ratio, I wasn't a fan of that when I saw it in the trailers. I was like, is this actually necessary? Like, I get it that it was shot in mainly IMAX, and, you know, if you were in an IMAX cinema, you would see it in the aspect ratio roughly. It's more boxy. But watching it at home, I'm telling you guys, it really, really works in that 4x3 aspect ratio, and I'm thankful for that. And I'm really grateful they didn't go for the wide aspect ratio like they did in the original version of the film because you really cut out a lot of the image and having that room at the top and the bottom 
is just great and you get to really soak in the cinematography and I think they just have done such a great job visually in this film. Throughout the runtime, I think the cinematography is a great enticer to keep you engaged for that four hours because you're constantly looking and you're like, wow, this is really actually very beautiful and I mean, it's not always that common in superhero films that you have such great cinematography. So I think we really have to applaud them for this because it's really great work. And I mean, I'm a cinematographer myself and I have to say my draw was dropped like half the time. So great job virtually. Okay, so let's move on to my next point. There are a lot of differences in this film to what you guys have seen in the 2017 version. It feels like an entirely different film because it doesn't go along at a normal pace like most superhero films that try and reach a two to two and a half hour runtime. I acknowledge that not all superhero films are like that. Obviously you have films like The Dark Knight Rises, The Dark Knight, that are just completely unlike any other superhero film and so although this film is very different, it's a lot bigger in scale and doesn't try and tackle the same thing that say The Dark Knight goes for because they are completely different films, I acknowledge in different ways that they are unlike a lot of other superhero films. Just as an example, I really like Aquaman, however it is more like a normal superhero film where it's like two to two and a half hours and they have the normal build up, it isn't like in all of these different chapters, it's basically the start, the middle bit, and then the conclusion where you have like one big fight scene. And so this, without spoiling, travels along in chapters, breaking up each bit of the story one by one and then eventually building to whatever they're gonna build to and there are so many big moments throughout the film that you think are the big moment but then it even builds up further on that and that's because they have a longer run time to actually build that context and then build to that payoff. And although the word is kind of overused a lot, I really do think the word epic, in terms of its scale, is quite fitting. And I guess comparison would be Lord of the Rings. Obviously, they're very different films. However, in terms of how long those runtimes are and what it allows the films to build up, adding a whole lot of mythology, plus building up characters and, and teasing the threats to come and what's going to happen in like the final battle scene that you normally get, in those ways, I think it is pretty similar. And so basically the stakes are built up and there's a lot more stakes than the original version of the film because that original version cut out half of that context and it cut out half of the build up, meaning that the conclusion wasn't nearly as good. So the Snyder Cut of Justice League really feels like a rounded film. That's what I'm trying to get at. Like it's a really, really good, solid superhero film. Okay, so let's move on. Let's talk about the characters. So you get to know the Justice League's characters in the films a lot better. So especially the Flash and the Cyborg. I think these two are the most important heroes throughout the film and they really weren't like that in the original film. And I'm not gonna spoil anything, but those are just two examples where the film differs from the original cut because it gives that extra time and they've been able to add so much more in terms of character build up that for a character like the Flash, like Ezra Miller's Flash was probably my least favorite Justice League hero in the 2017 version. And now he's one of my favorites, so if that goes to show anything, it shows how much this version has changed. And in regards to Cyborg, there is literally a whole huge chunk that was cut out of the original film and they've just added it in. Obviously they shot like a few extra scenes, but I don't think there was actually that much that they shot recently. Like they just used unused footage and they properly completed his story arc, whereas the other film literally cut it in half, like not even half, like cut it in a quarter. And so just overall, there were so many additions that added up to a very good film. And so once again, without going into any spoilers, and remember guys, March 18th, that's when I'm gonna release my full spoiler Easter eggs video where I'll talk about everything that goes down in the film basically. And the huge, major, shocking kind of twists that made me go crazy and the inner DC fanboy within me totally lost it. I can say that the way you see Steppenwolf, the main villain of the film, or so you thought, will totally change. Because again, that is another instance of the studio or whoever was editing it or was told to cut out half of this stuff. They missed out on a lot of his motivations and why he is doing all of these things. And the longer runtime has allowed his storyline specifically to be really good and I really liked him and now he's shot up to be like one of my favorite DC EU villains because he feels like a proper villain he doesn't feel half baked or anything he has a purpose and his purpose is to serve Darkseid and obviously that was one huge storyline that was chopped out of the original film like they just completely ignored Darkseid they only teased him they didn't introduce him they didn't even go into his mythology much they just inferred everything and so 
That was just one of the huge major chunks that they cut out of the original film, and so seeing them add in all of this stuff that was originally scrapped is amazing, because it's a proper story, and it's a proper film, and it works. And so the CGI is surprisingly great, it's very polished, and they've added in bits of blood, obviously it's R-rated, and there's a few F-bombs dropped here and there, and the CGI only slips like a couple of times. I have to say I was really impressed, because I know they've been working hard at it, and people have been very critical, I mean, even myself, I've been critical, but specifically with Steppenwolf, they've turned in what was basically a sock puppet into something that actually can be feared, and so his threat is a lot more imminent than what it was in the original version. So overall, I'm really impressed, and one last thing before we go away, I have to say, if this film does very well, I think they will go ahead and make plans for a Justice League 2, and I think fans are really going to rally for it to happen, so I think it's going to happen, and I I really want it to happen and so that is about it for today's video guys thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed my non-spoiler review of Zack Snyder's Justice League aka the Snyder Cut remember to stay tuned for the 18th where we're going to be going over all the easter eggs and major twists in the film and remember on the 18th go watch it for yourself as soon as it comes out in the UK it's coming out on Sky in America it's coming out on HBO Max so go find it wherever you can on the 18th because it's a great film and I really love it, and if you guys are a DC Comics fan, it's going to be perfect for you. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.